Well, welcome everyone. I've got Frank with me and Frank is an overcomer. He's had an amazing story of transformation and we're really excited to get to have this conversation because he came in to work with me and my programs with a lot of challenges in his body, dealing with things like pelvic floor tension, premature ejaculation, heart flaccid, urinary hesitancy, ED, pudendal neuralgia, also tension in your low back and abs. Like you had a lot of different things going on in your body. And a lot of viewers know what this is like, but I really just want to hand it over to you, Frank, because we'd love to hear what was going on, how this was unfolding, just so everyone can learn from you, learn from the story of transformation and, you know, know that it's possible to change these things. Thank you, Michael, for the intro. Yeah, a lot of my issues really came to the forefront about four years ago. I had really stressful, traumatic situation with a girlfriend at the time, as well as some pretty heavy stuff with my parents and family and just trying to deal with it, just grappling with all of that stuff. The stress just really hit me. How long ago was that just to get a timeline? That was about four years ago when all of this really came to the foreground of my life. And how did it show up? Was it like, you started to pee more often one day or you had a pain. Was there seemingly like an initiating incident or anything physically that you're like, whoa, this is scary. I got to start dealing with this. What's wrong with my body? What was that like? There was a couple things that I thought were related at first as far as like a trigger incident. There were some sexual issues that came up with my girlfriend at the time that I thought, you know, had gotten into me, like at least mentally, but that I thought, the root cause was, oh, well, this thing happened. And so there's like a physical cause. Yeah. And later come to find out that it's not the case. But that was my initial thought with that. And I did know that stress was like a big motivator or a big factor in like these kinds of things. But it really didn't like sit in my head. And so I really kept pointing at the specific sexual event as sort of like the, the, the very first thing that kind of kicked this all off, you know. And it looked like, hey, it was that sexual incident of maybe like not feeling like you could, you could last as long. Was it something like that, like an ED scenario? It was a little heavier than that. I mean, I can get into it because, uh, you know, the details are good. My girlfriend at the time had an IUD and there were some ways that she seemed to be. We didn't have a really good communication around like the pain that that caused me during sex. And uh, I definitely started to feel that it was being used against me in an emotional way in the context of the relationship. And so not only did I have the initial thought that like, oh, wow, this pain did something physical to my penis, but I also had just like the emotional strain of, you know, trying to deal with the pain of that mm -hmm. is happening again and again. And also you know, that meant within the context of the relationship. So there was a lot of stress going on, a lot of mental stress, a lot of emotional stress. And, you know, what I thought was physical stress. And so where did you turn to? I mean, can you give us a little bit of the timeline of kind of practitioners or approaches or treatments that you went into next? Yes, I had had previous experience with massage therapy and even internal massage or internal manual therapy. So that was where my mind went was, oh, there's something wrong with my pelvic floor. I need to go get it looked at. I forget the timing exactly of when I went to the doctor doctor, but I went and got some things checked and really didn't get a good reception there. But I checked the box and I was happy that I did that. But I turned to massage therapy and physical therapy thinking, hey, this is a way to undo the physical damage. I can see the symptoms and like get to the physical root cause. That's what I thought was going on. I probably did that within the first, I would say about six months after my symptoms really, really seem to flare up after all of this. Yeah. And whenever you were doing all these physical things, would you see really, you know, would you be like, hey, I actually feel better after doing that? Or you had like digressions and flare ups or kind of what was that like? Yeah. So the physical therapy was good. I was going every week for six weeks or eight weeks and it was very soothing to my symptoms. You know, I could pee more normally. I could have sex more normally. My emotions were soothed as well because I was like, hey, this feels a little better. I'm on the up and up. I did find myself kind of looking forward to the next treatment so that I could like, you know, get my fix, so to speak. Um, yeah, I did the same thing. So, 
For sure. Exactly. So I started to put two and two together and, you know, sustained manual therapy is not really a solution. It's very much like a patch. And so when my set of sessions ended, I was like, okay, that was cool. But I know that that's not a solution. So I want to look beyond that. And you knew it wasn't a solution just because you weren't healed yet, right? Is that primarily kind of, you're like, well, that is kind of working, but not all the way. So there must be something else. Exactly. The fact that I was like looking forward to the next session. And at the end of my set of sessions, I was like, I don't want to say the exact same physical space or headspace, but not a whole lot closer to this magic bullet final solution. And we're going to get to the magic bullet, right? That'll <laughs> be of this interview at some point. We'll, we'll reveal that. But I'm curious about like symptom progression. So did it change a lot over time? I mentioned a lot of symptoms and things that you went through. Can you <laughs> unfold that a little bit? Yeah, kind of the last couple months of time that I was still with my girlfriend at the time. I did notice that I didn't have the words for it then, but I noticed like oh, my penis is a little bit like harder during flaccid time. And, you know, I'm not quite as hard as I had been during sex. So that was a few months before everything hit the fan. And then after like all the all the family stress and the, and the stress of breaking up, which, you know, obviously did need to happen. Hard flaccid was just in full effect. Whether I thought it was hard or not, my penis was basically the same size texture and everything. And that was really overwhelming. I was like, my body's betraying me. That part of the stress like definitely became the foreground of all, of all my issues was on top of all my, my things. Like I can't even just like masturbate to like help myself here. The hard flask came in real hard. ED came in real hard. PE came in real hard. My sex drive went to like zero. That's probably when my like my kind of sides, I, I noticed that those started to ache and I noticed that I was doing a lot more like stretches to try to release that area. But throughout the day, it would it would tense back up again. But I just kind of grinded through it all for a while. Everything was pretty bad. And uh, I just added that to my pile of stresses. It was like, well, I can't pee right. Oh, I can't like have sex right. It was very stressful. And my my symptoms were like, I would say like nines across the board. Thankfully, there wasn't a whole lot of actual pain, but a uh, presentation of, of heart flaccid was something I had never seen before, something I'd never heard of. And it was very present in my life and in my mind, almost every two or three minutes, I would remember it and that caused me a lot of mental anguish as well, which I'm sure made the problem even worse. Yeah. You had mentioned once before too, that, that your abs were so tight kind of referring down to the pelvic floor and you would have to push into your abs or something in order to pee. What was that? Yeah. I would kind of have to like extend my posture a little bit and push with my kind of like tense up my lower abs and then do some kind of muscle dance with like my, my sphincter yeah. to like kind of open up my urine stream. I'm sure those are not the medical terms, but it was something I had to do. And then eventually I was like, oh, if I press on my abs, then I can kind of relax them, but still simulate pressure. And like, you know, that's, it was a lot. Yeah. It wasn't always reliable either, depending on, you know, myriad of factors. I know you're talking about, and I remember having to play Tetris with my pelvic floor tension and sphincters just to pee, basically. Yeah, there's a lot of tension down there. So when you can let it go enough, the sphincters can open up and the flow starts. So definitely even just a challenging everyday activity, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone wants to know, like, how are you feeling now? What's it like in your body now? Pain is almost non-existent. I mean, I still do have kind of the shadows of my symptoms, but there's no pain. I, I don't think about how hard it is to pee every every five minutes, but there's no pain, which is, I think, one of the hugest wins right off the bat. I would say my symptoms have definitely subsided a lot. I do experience like some little bits and flits of, of, of flare-ups, but I, I kind of hesitate to call them that because the range of them is like much smaller than previously. It's definitely mentally and emotionally manageable. Like I don't feel bad about myself, not nearly to the degree. I don't have these thoughts of this is painful. I hate it. I get to just kind of live a more normal life. 
yeah. and go to the bathroom when I have to go, which is huge. That was amazing. Like, I'm so happy that you're feeling way better. Seriously. What about like hard flaccid or sexual libido, erections, all that? Like, how are you feeling around all those areas? There's been a lot of improvement. Almost like the first week after starting your program, I started having morning wood again, which was like mind blowing. I started your program and I'm like, is this morning wood? It was really a joyful moment, honestly. And being like, okay, wow, that was just this much of this new approach. And I'm already seeing these huge results that I have not seen. All that time in physical therapy, I was not getting morning wood. Mm -hmm. Over time, I mean, I'd say in the last few months, my libido has gone up. The morning wood has continued and it's much easier to get aroused. Whereas before I wasn't able to get my brain to be aroused. I'm definitely trending more towards like, you know, normal sexual appetite feeling. I feel like a sexual being again. That part of me had kind of gone into the shadows, so to speak, for a little while. And it was nice to have it come back. That's amazing. Yeah. Morning wood seems so simple. Like a lot of guys just take it for granted. Like, oh, this just happens. But when you felt dead down there for years, like messed up, no energy, it just feels weird and and all. And then you have that come through. It's like, whoa, there's energy again. Like there's life force here again. I mean, your nervous system is much more relaxed. Things are more fluid and your muscles are more relaxed and things can and operate in that way. Another really big thing that I'm like, yes, I can do this is, you know, so I'm talking to someone new. We started getting into like sex talk and I can feel in myself that I don't have fear about that situation. Like, I am not scared to have sex. Uh, I'm not scared to allow what happens to happen. And I think that that's huge because that was very much not the case, you know, uh, for a good while. I trust myself to be able to handle however that situation comes out. Mm-hmm. It's just part of living a full, normal life. And very, that's, very, very grateful for that. That's a beautiful change to feel inside yourself a lot of guys are afraid to get back into dating and afraid like you know i'm not all the way healed yet i'm not perfect am i going to come too fast am i going to be is it going to hurt i just don't even know if i want to go there of course they want to but then they're afraid and it's amazing that you don't have that anxiety around it you're like this is just unfolding and we'll see where it goes yeah beautiful What about hard flaccid? Like, is it there sometimes or is it gone or what's that about? It is there. I have actually kind of forgotten how my penis was before hard flaccid. I think now I'm probably much more further along towards a healed state than I realize because it's still easy for me to be a little hypercritical, like as far as like feeling the textures, like was that there before or was it not there before? And I really think that I'm just overthinking it. There is definitely some feelings of hard flaccid. And I notice if I'm doing like three things at work and then I'll step away and I'm like, ooh, why did that feel funny and become a little bit more hard flaccid? But it immediately comes to my head as like, hey, I don't know what you're doing right now, but maybe this is a good time to relax and, let, yeah. and you know, kind of mm-hmm. kind of breathe through it. And like almost, you know, I'd say within a minute or two, like I don't feel as tight and like there's no pain. So you notice fluctuations in it. Like if you're really chill, just really relaxed, enjoying the moment, if there's hard flaccid, you're saying it's like a very minor feeling of it. It's really not noticeable or detrimental. Exactly. Even at like the best times, like I'm still like, oh, is this, is this where I'm at? Or is this, you know, pre, pre problems, Frank penis? Like I, I've kind of come more and more to like, well, of course it is. Cause you know. What else, what else is it going to be? Of course, I'm healing. Of course, things are getting better. Of course, it's not a straight line. And so it's really easy for me to like, you know, whereas before I go into a complete head spin now, like first instant, I'm like, dude, this is fine. Like, it's, it's okay. I want, it's already hugely better than it had been. And of course, it's only going to get better. So, you know, acknowledge it and move on with the other thing that I'm doing. Yeah. Well, I mean, everyone wants to know now for sure, like how you got here, because you talked about some of the things that didn't work. And then, you know, what were, what were the biggest realizations, the needle movers that 
change things for you? One of the biggest needle movers was me like constantly re-realizing that the symptoms are physical, but the cause is not physical. The cause is, you know, to be explored in your mind and in your heart and your thoughts and in your emotions. And I knew that. And, and, you know, I would kind of falter with that understanding. How, how did you know that anyway? Like, was it something you were raised with, the mind-body understanding? Or like, kind of where did you come into that knowing or believe it? No, I mean, a lot of it was like through your program. You okay. Know? Like before the program, yeah, I was searching for physical therapy and physical this and physical that. You're and so open at that point. You're like, well, all these other things aren't working and this seems to be a path and it makes sense too deep down. So definitely. So yeah, the needle mover was just me constantly re-realizing that. A few weeks into your program, I'm like, oh yeah, of course it's it's that. And then I would kind of falter with that understanding. And then I would have another watershed moment like, no, this is really just a non-physical issue. And so I would like dig deeper into the root causes and have another watershed moment where I'm like, no, this is completely not physical. And I know it sounds like I'm just repeating to myself the same thing, but it's like a, every time I repeated to myself, I got deeper with that understanding and my like feelings of stress and anguish about the situation started to go away. And I noticed that that just like made more better days for me. And so my thoughts became easier and my symptoms became easier. And I thought, wow, that's crazy. Like I'm, I'm stressing out less and my body's not stressed. Like I can work with this. And it got to be kind of fun where I'm like, wow, if I just trust that I'm on the up and up here and I begin to address these root causes, which direction am I going to, going to be in? And that was a huge boost for my enthusiasm and like motivation to continue with the whole thing. And yeah. And see more results, but also let it happen right, of its own. Amazing. Yeah. So you were seeing results by that realization that this is not just a physical thing. The symptoms are very physical, but like you yeah. said, the cause is not. And it's kind of like you're afraid of the shadow on the wall as a kid. Every night you try to go to sleep, it looks like the scariest monster and you're so petrified by it. And then one day you see that it was a tree branch. Even the next night when you see that shadow, you're still like spooked by it. You have to like check again that it's a tree branch and you got to keep checking. And then you have like a parent tell you, no, it's totally just a tree branch. And <laughs> after a while, you're like, oh, okay, you're finally able to just go into that room at night and enjoy your sleep. So even though like you come into the information, you still need like the experience of the, the reminders and the reminders, the reminders. So that was big. And then that next step, people are probably wondering, like, what do you mean root causes? You're like, you started to explore root causes. And that is the next step to like a deeper letting go. And what was like that like for you? How did you do that? What helped you with that? All the, the program, like journal prompts and a lot of the breath work, the breath work was very powerful. Like the, the meditation sessions that you have in there. Those are really kind of the workhorses, I think, of beginning to release the root causes was to journal deep down into events during these stressful periods with my family, with my ex at the time or my girlfriend at the time. And then also a lot of other deeper, more deeply set thoughts and feelings that I had within me that, you know, I, through the meditations and breathwork, I realized like this is not serving me. And there is a way for me to let these feelings go, or at least for me to lessen their grip on my emotional state, my self state, which obviously would affect my stress, which obviously affects all the physical symptoms. To really realize that you don't have to have a lot of faith in knowing that the root causes are not physical because you just constantly see that, wow, when I'm stressed, my symptoms flare up. Well, you didn't do anything physical. So why are you still trying to solve it with a lens of like, we need to fix the physical body. When stress can throw you off or bring you back, it becomes more and more apparent as you go through these cycles and you maintain a higher awareness of your symptoms and your stress level and like those kinds of things. Yeah. Let's look at a couple of areas then. One thing you talked about was journaling and breath work and meditations that you're consistently putting yourself in a space of a grander perspective. You're putting yourself in a space of like, let me fill and look at all of this and recognize it. Why do you think it worked? Or did you notice like, well, I cried one time or I had a conversation or 
you just felt something, you, you felt lighter maybe whenever you acknowledged it. Can you speak to that a little bit? Uh, I liked to do my journaling with a pen and paper and it's you, the pen and the paper. It's really easy to not be completely honest with yourself, but you write some stuff that maybe you don't want to admit to yourself, but you do because you're doing it in service of yourself. Um, so the journaling was not an easy exercise. Some were a little easier than others, but getting down to like deep feelings about events or about situations in the near past or in the very far past. It's definitely some emotional work and definitely some tears that went down. Some of the questions I could feel inside myself that I didn't want to answer them, but of course I was going to. And it was a good exercise. It was a good exercise. And the meditation, pretty similar and that it's easy to not be honest with yourself. And if you really want to get to the root cause, you're going to be honest with yourself because that's how you really start to address the issues, you know? Yeah. And what about like some of the realizations that came up? Actually translating them into your real life, like who you're being, your actions, your personality. Did that happen for you anywhere? Yeah, I would say maybe after week seven or eight or so, I could actually look back on myself two months prior, three months prior and, and think to myself, wow, I am actually a different person. I appear as the same Frank, but inside I'm not, I'm lighter. I started to really integrate that understanding where it became more automatic to me to see that I was changing and that progress was happening. Basically, I wasn't doing this for nothing, that this was actually like, look, here's results. Look, here's morning wood. I would notice my stress more easily and then that could help me to mitigate my symptoms at that moment because it's not a physical thing. It's a mental thing. And the more you clued in with everything and you make those changes and you're honest with yourself, you can notice the changes within and be able to self-soothe and remind yourself, hey, there's nothing physical. Yes, that the symptoms are physical and that you do have the physical sensations. But they're not caused by a physical thing. And so if you want to address this pain and this stress right now, it's going to be self-soothing like emotionally and self-soothing with your thoughts and thinking new pathways. As we wrap up here, I want to ask you about something. You actually came to this two-day root cause release retreat, an online retreat. I actually have it in the Overcome and Vigor program now, so people can do it on their own if they need to. And sometimes people are like, look, I know about this mind body stuff. I've even done journaling. I've done meditations. I, I don't understand. Like I'm still uh, gripped with these symptoms so often. Like why won't it go away? And honestly, I tell people don't do anything for two days. Just like be in meditation, like stop everything. And that sounds really weird probably, but basically we did that together for that retreat. So can you tell people what it was like for you? Why was that useful or you know, anything about that? When you posted about it initially, I was like, ah, do I want to do this? And then just knowing that you've walked in my shoes and you put this program together and you're really emphasizing the importance of this event. I thought, you know what? I'm going to trust the process. I'm going to trust you. I dove in, I, I organized everything so that I could be completely unreachable that weekend. And I did all the sessions and made sure I prepped for it and didn't communicate with anyone else. I did the whole thing and it was an interesting experience. It was a, a lot of quiet, obviously, meditation and just being, which I know we've talked a, a lot about. The meditations, I mean, they were hugely powerful. I mean, breath work that we did was very powerful for me that that particular weekend it really was a good like watershed i didn't go into the weekend thinking oh this is going to be my cure you know i'm just going to do this thing i'm going to trust this i'm going to try to enjoy myself and do all the things and i came out of it a lot lighter just like a, a newer better version of myself even during the event like after the first night i was like wow i'm changing wow i can feel stuff in my body that i hadn't felt before I'm just going to let it do its thing. And so it was really just me like accepting things as they came. I was glowing after I, I felt great. I felt lighter. My stress went way, way, way down. Everything was beautiful. I had this like newfound ability to just like do something without thoughts. I could go for a walk and just look at things and just enjoy it all, all on its own. That may not seem related to pelvic floor issues or hard flaccid or, or ED and all that, but it is. It's it's huge. That's this is what you want. This is another way to address 
the root cause is to bring that stress level down, bring those thoughts, put them away when you don't need them. Those are really some of my biggest takeaways from the retreat and highly recommend if you ever have that again, that people do it because it's a great thing to do. It's a great reset. Yeah. And people are so afraid of not doing the mind wants to control the future by seemingly do a lot of things. It's like, I have to keep moving. I have to keep going or else I'm going to stay sick or in this pain or this dysfunction. Um, but if you just stop everything and you notice the thoughts that are already rolling through your mind, you notice the emotional waves, the fears, and you just stay in equanimity, they pass through you. And like you said, you have this newfound ability to live life totally in the present moment, which, yeah, if you're not engaging in stress, anxiety, pushing away aspects of life, you're not going to create psychophysiologic disorders in the first place. So it's really a powerful thing to help you to heal or return to your natural state and then not have to deal with other mind-body conditions, which is really nice. Yes, it is. Definitely. Enjoy the good times. This was amazing, Frank. I really appreciate your vulnerability and, and just talking about these things. And a lot of clients are not really willing to or afraid, I guess, to speak about some of these things. And I think it's great that you just went there and we had this conversation. So I appreciate that. Huge thank you for everything, for the program and for the events, the coaching calls, the guidance. It's been amazing, dude. Thank you for very, very positively impacting my life. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely. All right. It's an honor. And also to anyone who's watching, you know, if you have transformed, had a success story you want to share, reach out to me. I really want us to be spreading the word and just have these conversations. Provides hope and possibility to people who are in really dark places right now. So thank you, everyone. And see you again sometime soon. Take care, everyone. Thank you.